Sven has got his hat on. Hip 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 hooray! Sven has got his hat on and Transformers come out to play. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Hi and welcome to Geekology, I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight we're continuing with the... <laughs> oh god are we continuing... with uh, Transformers, the definitive G1 collection by Hachette. Now for those of you who have thought, it's been a while since they did one of those, you're in for a treat. <laughs> <sighs> we're catching up. Because between not being any edit and, and stuff, it's just... Uh, yeah, we, we felt that doing these live didn't... Yeah. quite have the, the the editing facility that Sven needed for my mental breakdowns in between doing them. So um, Sven, how many issues do we have to um, review? 24. That's an exact year's worth. Oh. Ah. Well, so let's just crack on. Through these. Let's just crack on with this. Issue we? 33, which is volume number two, New Order, which is one of the very original comics series uh, stuff. This is just after uh, the Autobots last stand and Shockwave comes along and tries to take command of the Decepticons. And just in case you haven't watched one of these videos before, these ones we've already reviewed and he will put a playlist just up there. Oh yes. So yeah, very uh, it's mid 80s artwork um, and the storyline is pretty damn cool actually. So uh, there we go. Yep, Volume that's what 2. Call, that's what I call a review. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, if, if we can crack on like that, that's... Yeah, let's do it. Issue 34! Which is Volume 3! Yeah, okay. Which is epic, because it's Dino Bot Hunt! Which is... A hang on, hang on, like, Dino Hunt, 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 Hunt... Yeah, pretty much! Okay. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the basically neurons have, have fizzled out in the Dinobots brains because they were stuck in the carpet for four million years. Yeah. Um, so basically, they go mental. Understandable. Yep, and the Autobots have to go and try and stop them from murdering humans. Uh, slight problem is that the Decepticons get wind of this and start messing with the plan. Now, during this story, Soundwave's in command because Shockwave's in a bog somewhere, I think, and mm -hmm. Megatron's. Uh, to be fair, I often get caught in the bog. Yes. So, so Soundwave, in his in in improving, he's actually really really good at being an evil sod. Um, grabs one Dinobot, takes it to the other Dinobot, or one of the other Dinobots, and sets them against each other, and basically it ends up creating more Autobot casualties than Calvatron and Shockwave put together in the previous issues. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, this is really, and it's, it's a really, really nicely done tale. It's, it's brilliantly. Just the tale, or was the whole robot good? Oh, the whole, whole thing is just great. It's fantastic. It's bloody brilliant. It's one of the best British stories. Oh, no, no, we have a Dinobot who's 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 basically going la la over a golden-haired girl in this. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which then three is used later on um, in different ways. So issues is in volume three. In we go. First three volumes of Rock. Um, Issue 35 is volume 23, which is Destiny. Oh, golden haired girl got used in different things. Oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> I don't even know if he's making this there's edit. A, there's a dream oh, sequence where first. she's actually... Uh, they made this the dream sequence where Sludge thinks the Decepticons have created a robot version of her to, to get at him. Um, yeah. Then she turns up later as well, and there's a whole volcano thing going on, and Galvatron thinking he's a demigod. It, it's, it's fun. <laughs> See, I don't know if you're thinking the piss or not. You've done so many, I'm going to trick you and get it into blooper shit. I'm genuinely, I, you know what, I think I'm starting to have PTSD for bloopers. It's issue 35 is volume 23, which is Destiny, which is IDW. Um, right, it's Regeneration the IDW 1. comics. I'm not really that, I never really got into them. This is my way of getting into them. We now they've finished this particular continuity and rebooted it again. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, but this is Regeneration 1. This is basically um, the continuation of the original American comic, um, which was done multiple years later and kind of tries to wipe out G2, which is really annoying because I prefer G2. But there we go. Um, it's not a bad story. You prefer but G2? Yeah. Well, comics, but not the toys. Yeah. Okay. 
confused yet? Yeah, just a little. Excellent. I, uh, I do. I feel like I'm in the intro ep uh, beginning of soap. So. Um, and that was a great series. The thing is, is Regeneration 1's actually really, really, really good. It's just that G2 was also really, 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 really good. So, yeah, but um, it's it's Andrew Wildman artwork, so <laughs> that's always a win. Um, unfortunately, Prime's eyes are blue. Um, <laughs> won't go there. Um, but yeah, that's actually quite fun. And uh, that's uh, volume 23, so... <laughs> Do 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 There we go. Hopefully the table will still stay erect. <laughs> we won't go there with Micromasters. Anyway, issue 36 is volume 30. So we're which using is... combiners, I'll worry. <clears throat> um, Issue 36, volume 30, War Within the Dark Ages. So I think that's the... Is that the second War Within? Or is it, yes, it's the second War Within, which is basically... Dark Ages. Yeah. It's essentially what eventually turned into War for Cybertron. Oh, okay. In, in sort of like the time period area era. So it's basically... It's, it's, so how many times did the damn things visit Earth? Mm. What do you mean? Well, if it always the Dark Ages of Cybertron, oh, yeah. not the Dark Ages yeah, of Humanity. Yeah, this is millions of years ago. Right. I mean, this is basically okay. um, you've got a Grimlock running around who's a tank, and the Dinobots are spelled D N D Y N O B O T S, as in yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and you've got War Within Optimus and War Within Prowl, and yeah. Um, some of which actually got made into toys. So what's the lifespan of one of these things actually meant to be? A transformer? Yes. Millions of years. Millions of years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the idea of a dark age on a planet full of robots which already... Oh, you, you're going... Oh, you, 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 you're going... You're, you're, the problem is, is that you're, you're interpreting that as one like our dark ages. By dark age, I mean out of power. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. sense. <laughs> Literally a case of it's yeah, got enough energy to make everything work. <laughs> <laughs> Including lamp posts made of sound waves. What? <laughs> it's a G1 comic like with yeah. cartoons. Oh, yeah, in, in, in the pilot for the G1 TV show, sound wave turned into a lamp post. Okay. Um um, I just, you know, oh, I, I Volume hate, 30. hate asking um, questions. Right, it's so... It's not Dreamwave era, by the way, just so you know. Rather, so the planet that is one. Cybertron mm -hmm. presumably has some sort of energy, life form, um, yeah, energy of itself. Yeah, a million years of war by this point have basically right. drained. Of All the little robots on top, I guess, are sucking the energy yep. out of the planet. Mm -hmm. So surely they would do the green energy thing and look to nearby suns for energy of some description? They'd ripped the planet out of its orbit by the, the ferocity of the fighting. Okay, so, so then there was a dark no age where there was no energy for the robot, so I'm guessing a starvation and a shit load of them die. Well, they shut down, you know, we went into stasis lock. Okay, so we put the them right into Windows well. sleep mode. Yeah. So only half of them survived. Okay, so... Some are dead. So, uh, some of them that have been blown to bits and then they managed to come back to life in a zombie way in one of the G1. So, yeah, because surely that would be the best bit. You, you, you wait for them all to go into to sleep mode and then you energise up one of your guys who just slaughters them all in the sleep. Oh, no. In, 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 um, in the, the story I'm thinking of, uh, literally the dead body parts were reactivated by a radio signal. That carries energy. Well, yeah. Like the tracker for the bees? Yeah. Okay. It was basically, yeah, it's flame. I love it that, by the way. Of all the micro-technology we've ever invented, I can't remember what the, the engineer's name was, but she is a genius to make it powered by uh, Wi-Fi. That yep, was, that that was just... That's coming. There's a lot coming. more that No, it exists. Well, no, 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 it's but it's going to be coming into more household things. I just, I think that woman was a genius. I yes. hope she... Really makes it big in money. Right, go on. What's next? This is issue 37, which is volume 45. Yeah, just because it's going to drive me crazy. So what happened? Did, did the planet come back into orbit of a system with some power or what? 
Well, basically, um, a bunch of the characters end up on Earth because they were. Assuming apparently... space travel takes energy. Well, yeah, but the arc. Well, it depends again. It depends on which version of the storyline you think. Do you remember before the Cybertron when? I remember Metro, the game. Metroplex gives all the power over to the arc so it can take off. There's all this kind of stuff going on. Okay, and so in this, this one... So, issue 37 is volume 45, Last Stand of the Wreckers. Um, Nick Roche had a lot to do with this. Hi, Nick. Uh, I do have a hardback version have of this already. a friend who worked on this one? Yeah, Nick and um, James Roberts, I believe, worked on this as well. Mm. And James, I've got a, uh, an unofficial novel he did at one point. Yeah. Uh, which was rather good. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to remember if I've got my names right, but um, I think it was Nick Roche and James Roberts who worked on this, pretty sure. But of the um, the wreckers were really, yeah, writers Nick Roche and James Roberts, pencils Nick Roche and Guido Guidi, uh, inks by Nick, John Wyclough, Guido and Andrew Griffith. So the wreckers, were they the big... Robot with the cement truck and the other No, things. that's Devastator. You're thinking of the Constructicons. Right, so what are the Wreckers? The Wreckers are basically the Autobot SAS. They're special forces. Right. Which means okay. that they walk a very blurry line at times. Okay. Um, I mean, even in the original G1 comic, because they were a British invention, mm. um, the first time you see them, they're actually doing war games at Debris, which was their base. Um, and they were literally doing things like spearing Decepticons through the um, neural cluster and things like that to make sure they'd stay down and stuff like that. So they're, 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 they're even more vicious than the Dino was. Okay. okay. Um, and their pro previous leader, Impactor, basically goes off the deep end. Um, in this version of the story, in the original G1 story, he actually gets reactivated as part of that whole lobby thing. And then manages to get the control back. Okay. Right, exactly. right. So, which is weird. So that's oh, 45. So that's this end? Yeah. 45, 45, 45. There's 46, that'll do. Yeah. And in we go. Right, next up is. Um, Issue 38 is volume 49, The Iron Age, which appears to be something where Ironhide's been killed and comes back to life. Okay, now, now just out of curiosity, because, you okay. know, we had the Dark Age. Iron Age, I presume that's only referring to the character Ironhide, yeah, I'd imagine so. Because like, was he important in the, the whole history of Cybertron? Well, he's the security director of um, the Ark, and also Optimus Prime's bodyguard. And in the cartoon series, was voiced by Peter Cullen as well. I'm sorry, I must have misphrased the question. So was he important in the whole... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not quite as important possibly as Ratchet, but yeah. Pretty much. Ratchet's the medic. Why is the medic... Mm, mentioned? Well, no, I mean, yeah. There's, there's because no, they share there's a body form. called the medic age. They share, they share a body form, so I and Hyde Ratchet are actually the same toy. Just okay, Ratchet's just got different paint jobs. And Ratchet's got a, um, a light bar on top. That's it. Okay. And a different paint job, basically. So, there should yeah. be a lot, technically, on a planet full of robots, there tend to be a lot of that. Yes. But I might just be racist, because they all look the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there should be a lot more who share a body type. There to should be fair, be, there yeah. should be a hell of a lot more. I mean, the jets, there should be loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of them, not six. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, you flesh out and you, yeah. this is where a load of extra characters come into things and you've got like Acid Storm turns up and then... You see, I, and, oh. if, if I was a toy manufacturer in charge of, you know, this sort of thing, I would just give you a shed load of different paint jobs but give each one a completely different face just to do all over so you have to buy each toy. It's kind of where they're going now. Whereas in G1, it was very much, it was just the same toy repainted. Yeah. Um, these days, they're doing minor changes to things like heads. Yeah, so that to me makes so, sense. Yeah. Right, so where's this so one? So this is 49. So. And um, what was the story behind that one? Because I think I talked over the bit where you explained it. <laughs> Sorry. It's basically Iron High going back to life having problems. Okay. Um, which, you know, happens. You know, look at Spock. Um, 
Einheit, by the way, is the one who goes such heroic nonsense in the, uh, well, he basically goes, um, you know Megatron basically goes such heroic nonsense and then blows the crap out of someone who's grabbing the egg? That's Einheit. Okay. I love the fact he has particle cannon, you say fusion cannon, the back of it, it was back of it, fusion cannon, you can tie it into Transformers movie, blah blah blah. Um, anyway, right, issue 39 is volume 11, we're back to the original stuff, Legacy of Unicron. This is when we find out when the how the Transformers were created according to the original comic book in the UK. I'm guessing it's not primeval soup. Kind of. Basically, Primus and Unicron uh, fight each other on the astral plane. Uh, Unicron's winning. Primus to try and beat him, tricks him, and they both uh, rematerialize in the real world as uh, barren lumps of metallic space rock. Unicron starts turning him into the body, his is into the body that you know of as Unicron. Primus turns his into Cybertron and populates it. And basically the, the original 12 or 13 um, Autobots rise from the surface of the planet and become what we fully know formed, as fully third. programmed, yeah. not well, imbued, 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 imbued with the spark from Primus. The only problem is, is one of them goes wrong and he becomes the 13th member and is called Megatronus these days and um, has something that ends up being involved with Unicron and becomes the Fallen and um, basically and then Unicron's influence on Primus results in the introduction of evil which is where Megatron comes in later on because in the British in the comics and British comics especially Everybody on Cybertron was an Autobot up until one point, and then Megatron, and then Megatron created, created the Decepticons the because he got pissed, basically. Okay. Um, so this one, students? Uh, it's a th about the third copy <laughs> <laughs> because there was a cock up with the spine. The oh, it's that remember? one! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so this storyline. This storyline. So basically, oh, so transform with a phoenix painted across its chest. Oh um, no, it's just really dodgy 80s artwork. It's rotting spine. Right. Um, so yeah. Whoa, that was some dodgy looking stuff. What? Uh, let's sketch one more. All right, maybe another one. Maybe another one. There's a panel of three very, very brightly coloured robots. Like that, but there was a third one. Oh god, where are they? <laughs> there, there! What the hell? Throttlebots! They're the throttlebots. <laughs> they were pull back and go cars. <laughs> Wide load. <laughs> Cold bug. Freeway and searchlight. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm bam, 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 yeah. You. You carry on. Basically, Unicron's head lands lands on junk, becomes reactivated, and he enslaves the, the junkian race to start building him a replacement body using the the, uh, the planet. I need to know that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Who are the junkians? <laughs> you talk TV. Kill Unicron. Destroy Unicron. Kill the Grand Poo Bile. Emily, eliminate even the toughest stains. No muss, no fuss. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Rush right on down. No? No! Trust was a movie? Dare to be stupid? <gasps> yes, dare to be. Yes, sorry. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when was the last time you saw that film? I don't know, the script's in my head. Okay. Can't remember my own life. Early 90s. Would have Bit been. of Death's Head. Because um, Death's Head was introduced in the, in the British Transformers comic original. Which is nice. And then Death's Head thinking, well, he's, he, he might be big, but he's going to be a normal a normal creature. And then goes inside Unicron's mind and finds out that he's not. He's actually Chaos and Fury given form. So, yeah. So, yeah. There's also some bits about uh, when Blaster went off the rails. And <laughs> Grimlock was being a dick. Anyway. Ish. That's uh, volume 11. So up this end. That's what she for Clement. Issue we 14. use that joke way too much. I watched one of our episodes the other day. Like, <laughs> no. We need to hone that bad boy back. Oh, it's pretty. Um, issue 14. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're in no, no position to comment. <laughs> um, issue 14, volume 17, Matrix Quest. This is again, pretty, it, it, it's cool. Um, it's basically, this is an early story again. This is from the American G1 comic, um, way back when, when uh, Optimus Prime had been destroyed. 
Actually, and that's another way I'd fudge you lot up. What? I'd, I'd give everybody a slightly different logo to paint on their arm, so you could have three oh, yeah, different yeah. blue cars, but blue cars with different things. Oh, yeah, so so different people would like have to buy them. Well, that, that's Nightbeat. In, the, in, in Japan, that was released as Minerva in a completely different colour scheme. Okay. Minerva, Minerva, whichever one you want to go with. It's female. Um, Autobot, Junior Headmaster. Hey. Matrix Quest. Basically, at one point, uh, someone used a joystick, blew up Optimus Prime, uh, the bits of him were stuck <laughs> up, uh, put back together, he didn't get up. Um, but is a joystick however, to blow up Prime. after the joystick was blowing him up, he, he was saved onto a floppy disk, which then went to Nebulous to make the create allow the creation of Powermaster Prime. And um, but what didn't what people didn't realise he had the creation matrix in his chest. So the Autobot sent him into into space. Um, so at this point, they're actually needing to find the matrix again. Because Unicron's coming. Kind of floppy That's disk. basically what this was. What, what kind of floppy disk? It's a five and a quarter inch. <laughs> I have one at home. It's Flop labelled Optimus Prime's brain. <laughs> nice. Okay. Anyway, um, some of this is uh, newly coloured, I think, if I remember rightly. Or is it? Yes, some of the back bits are newly coloured. Um, because we've got some of the British exclusives like Way of the Warrior and, and all this kind of stuff. As well as the Matrix Quest itself. Uh, Deathbringer, that was a British one I think as well. Um, so this is quite epic frankly and one of the, a great story. Um, especially with Deathbringer because Deathbringer is where the Matrix has started bringing things back to life but without control. Okay. Uh, and it brings back this robot that was designed to cleanse planets that were full of plague. Cool. And unfortunately sees life as a plague now. <laughs> It wouldn't be far off. It wouldn't be far off. Yeah, so volume 17. Definitely worth having. Anything down this side is pretty much worth having, frankly. There we go. Um, that's a cheaper claim. Metro Edition 41 is volume 73, which is Transformers vs. G.I. Joe Part 1. Which is definitely IDW. I hate the artwork for this. I know I do. It's going to be IDW then. Yeah. G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yo, Joe! I believe it's the correct term. I think it's something like that, yeah. Um. Ooh, you said bad artwork. That's Ooh. actually quite nice. I hate it. No, I live for that. Do you? Yeah. Now this is the weird thing is that this 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 stuff. Yeah, I but you've got to bear in mind I'm into gold and silver age comics. Yes, yeah, so. true. It's very retro stuff. Um, See, it's lovely. It. Some quality work there. I mean, look at that. It's stunning. It's very much horses for courses. I feel. On this in this case. I love the fact they digitised that his brain's been blown out to make it look, yeah, I like that. There we go. See, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. We'll just have a different... Anyway, so from yeah. preference of aesthetic. Well, no, it's sweet. sweet. Mm. Oh, good God. <laughs> is, it, is it right at the end? I'm going to move these round the Watch him bend. Let's give me that a little bit. And the mug. Meh. How much is left to the wall, son? How much is left to the wall? <laughs> Not as much as you might think. Issue 42 is volume 76. Titan's Return Part 2. Um, this is fairly recent because it's Titan's Return, which was two segments of generations ago. So we're currently on War for Cybertron Siege. Before that was Power of the Primes. Before that was Titan Return in the toy line. Right. Okay. This I've never seen. Talking of the toy line, I've okay. got a Transformers question that I'm, I'm not quite sure how it fits in. Metro has been one of the Titans. Right, so you know when they come to Earth yep. and they assimilate the present day technology yep. to scan it to, to yeah. Metro, where do fidget spinners come into this? Um, Ask Megatron, it's his fault. Um, I'm blaming. Fidget I'm, cubes? I'm, I'm blaming, I'm definitely blaming Michael Bay for that. Okay, Fidget. Because they're technology cubes. that Megatron influenced. But they're, they're official, they're Hasbro. I'm blaming Michael Bay. So. Michael Bay. So surely the part of the bad universe. to do with Transformers with Michael Bay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this art was quite good. I quite like this. You're going to hate it. Obviously. No. No, it's, it's a, that's one thing I will give Transformers. 
Most of the artwork is very good. Metroplex isn't heeding the call of Last Prime, he's heeding the call of Windblade. Is Windblade? Um, a female character who was designed by committee, literally by fan um, oh God. polls. I hate to think of And then the, like the following year was Victorion, who was a combiner, she's all female. Um, I don't, no, I've got nothing against female characters, I'm just hating to think what a bi-committee character must be like. Well, um, Windblade is a jet with, um, who, who kind of like Thrust has VTOL capability okay. in the wings. Yeah. Um, but she's been written, she was written really badly in the Combiner Wars TV show, Combiner Wars, um, to say TV show, it was a show. written badly. Why? Let's put it like this, the, the fan dub where she just turns up and goes, I on Windblade every time she turns up is actually better than what they wrote. Okay, okay. So there's a fan dub where she literally just comes in and goes, Die. Hi, hi, I'm Windblade. Yeah, literally. Um, anyway, but um, I need to read this because I don't know it at all. But uh, the artwork looks nice. I'll give you that. Wow. That's quite cool. Well, there we are. We don't mention Windblade before, we think. Sure we have. Mm, you may have done. Well, there we go. Uh, volume 76. You may, you may have done and I've just, you know, glazed. Right, right at the end. Okay, shift it. Oh, hang on, hang on. Because you don't want to... Thank you. You don't want to edge it. There we go. Right, uh, issue 43 is volume 62, Earth 4. Post-Dark Cybertron. Um, from the look at Jazz on the front, he looks a little bit full of Cybertronish. There we go. Jazz is down. Just out of curiosity, you know how we do Star Trek, the official Starships collection by Eagle Moss? Yep. And there are also a shed load of other YouTubers who also do very similar reviews of said product. Yeah. How many other people are reviewing these products? A few of them. Not many. But yeah. A few. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The problem is it's not been released outside the UK as far as I know. Oh, so this is British then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. Why is... Uh, licensing issues. Oh, mega licensing issues. issues. Um, oh, God, there must be Americans out there willing to kill for these things. Quite possibly. I mean, they're getting... Um, Actually, why did we go for though? Americans? God, the Japanese must be going insane. Well, they, would, they, they weren't seen half of these at all, ever. So, yeah. Are they releasing this stuff in PDF? Or? I don't know. I doubt it. Very much. Mm. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of Amer uh, American and British stuff is slowly starting to get over into Japan actually now. Because they must love that mm. versions of some of the... Well, the records alone. The G1 stuff must be amazing too. Um, but the, the, again, artwork is, is gorgeous. Why is Optimus looking far too much like Ultraman and stuff? Never mind, okay. Um, but this is, this is, oh yeah, there we go. It looks very war for Cybertron there, that jazz does. If we have any Japanese viewers that are interested in these books, we're willing to trade for robots. <laughs> um, By we. <laughs> Masterpieces, How many for specifically. Yeah. Um, ooh, cover gallery. Always nice. See, that's, I don't know why you think I've got something against the artwork. It's, it's just the uh, it's feeling not I got. Like uh, 62 goes in there. Okay, Ooh. Uh, issue 44 is volume 4, so we're right back to the beginning. This is second generation, which is very, very UK. Um, this is where the special teams turned up for the first time. So the aerial bots, the stunticons, the protector bots, and the combaticons. Mm. Um, it combined. So do you think many people are buying these on an individual basis just for the stores? I don't think everybody's just subscribing to the description. I mean, there might be a few people who've gone, well, I've actually got too much already in hardbacks. Um, because IDW have released a few hardback collections that have been the old reprints which were done as hardback and softback. Mm. But the hardbacks were significantly more than the softback ones. But um, yeah, that's not and they amazing. were quite hard to get hold of at some at okay, one point. Thanks. So you know, they, a lot of people. This is basically been a godsend for a lot of people who wanted the whole run. In just couldn't so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, 
Right, so second generation. Um, so some of the, some of the um, American stuff in here is includes a bit where um, a gangster finds a half knackered Megatron who's basically in gun mode and um, has been, well, he basically got knackered by the Dinobots and went down a slope and basically he has knocked his higher brain functions out. Okay. So he I can't think for himself, connection. but he can follow instructions. Ooh. So he follows the instructions from the human. A gangster with yeah. a robot gun. Yeah. That could be useful. So, uh, but then basically goes along and he um, basically drops him a little bit later on. And basically, that will be Jigs' brain. And, 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 and Megatron's like, You dare give me instructions? <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, going on, there we have the Rise of Auto Brand. This is where Jetfire gets his Autobot symbol for the first time because during Dinobot Hunt, um, he still had a Decepticon symbol mm -hmm. and it got gored out by Slag with one of his, um, one of his uh, horns. So they did the Rise of Auto Brand, which is like, This is where you earn your Autobot symbol, kind of thing. Um, yeah, various other little bits of story going on. Megatron trying to eat coal and then freezes because he can't digest it and he's run out of energy. Um, <laughs> all sorts of other things going on there. Yeah, uh, I can't. On. Yeah, no. He end up actually end up with Soundwave managing to get um, Megatron and Shockwave to work together for the first time mm. because they've been beating each other over to, to, to try and take command of the, the, the uh, Decepticons. Um, this is quite cool. Auto so how does Earth energy actually compete with Cybertronian energy on a like well, power in, basis? In the comics, it was it was fuel, not energon. So they had fuel on Cybertron. Okay. Explaining that's another question entirely because because so, there was no organics. How was there ever fuel? Um, well, no, it depends. Yeah. Um, but basically, they the Autobots made friends with a character called GB Black Blackrock, who happened to be um, an oil. Millionaire, so basically he created a, a version of their fuel. Oh, actually, did yes, actually did. Uh, Robo Buster was basically where Buster with Wiki had uh, designed himself a suit so he could be a transformer. Yes, um, I knew about that one. Yeah, and basically takes on Shockwave. Yeah, so what, what am I going to do my first outing? I've been called Take on one of the most powerful Decepticons. That's a really good idea. Um, and second generation was basically because Buster had had the creation matrix in his head for a while. He started having dreams about the future of the Transformers race. That's basically his dream state. Um, and Prime basically does some directed dreaming with him by connecting in the same way they did when he gave him the Matrix. Okay. Um, and basically, yeah, went through that. So that's quite cool. Um, so, yeah. That's all that story down there. So, this was actually, a th I'm trying to remember, I think this was a little mini comic that was on the front of. No. No, it was it was the main comic. It was it was a, a story specifically for the UK, um, so that was quite cool. And then we had the whole the Dinobots waking up after the Dinobot hunt as well. So loads of threads were starting to tie up, and everybody was mm. coming back online basically. And if it Just was the temperature, time. how would you describe it? Cool. Okay. Um, issue four. Well, volume four. Go right down this end. Oh, the way up there. There we go. Right. Uh, issue 45 is volume 32, Infiltration, which is an IDW story. <coughs> Hello. Issue 45. Sorry, issue 45, volume 32, Infiltration. This is uh, an IDW story I know nothing about. Um, actually, yes I do. Infiltration. I have the individual comments for this. So where they started redesigning the G1 forms. Um, Why would be the first question? Because they could. Yeah, there we go. Um, I think her name is Verity, if I remember rightly. I'm not for sure, but I don't get me mixed up with another character. Oh, it is Verity, there we go. Um, there's Ratchet, the slightly new form. And uh, I know Prowl got redesigned for this. Um, I'm pretty sure Simon Furman wrote this, actually. I think this is right at the beginning of YDW's time with Transformers. Um, yeah, Did they ever explain the size to mass ratio for the No, 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 no. no. <laughs> they didn't even attempt that. That was not going to There's be... plenty of fan theories and things that they've tried to suggest, like mass shifting, where yes, that pocket, makes sense. pocket universes inside the, the, the Transformers can use to put that extra mass in and stuff like that. I'd have gone with compacting molecules into a, a sub dimension myself, but hey. Same thing, basically. Um, but yeah, there we go. 
it's not good at all. And that's volume 32. So up we go to there. Filling in some of the gaps here. Right. Um, issue 46 is volume 24. And how? The War to End All Wars. What, you've got left another year of this? Or is this coming to a conclusion sometime soon? There's only 80 issues, I believe. Okay. So um, I don't think we're in awfully. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a few more years of these left. Well, the last issue we've got to come to is 56, so there's 24 left after that isn't there okay. so yeah yeah um the wars went all wars this is a regeneration one issue the regeneration one lasted a few issues of the comic yeah so let's go to stretch over a few of these there's ultra magnus on the cover with primus underneath him um and basically the same same thing with your regeneration one lovely artwork primus got blue eyes which is irritating and um it's just one of my little bears which you probably know by this point um and this is basically the alternative version of G2, basically. Okay. Um, it's a bloody good story, but I still prefer G2. End of that. Okay, volume 24. If you're wondering why he's got silver all over his hands, because he's been painting a phaser rifle. Uh, it has been scrubbed to the point where it will not come off on the comments. Next. I'd throw that in there before people. Better not. Um, <laughs> up on that issue 47 is Volume 28, Worlds Collide Part 2, which is Dreamwave. This is where G1 and Armada merged. The look on your face makes me think <laughs> that did not go well. Um, I think this is when they first suggested that Galvatron wasn't Megatron. Or something. Well, the fact that it's a completely different name would indicate I mean, you've got that it's a hot do you not remember the, the movie? Yes, I do, but still. It's, it's not a completely different name. Megatron, Galvatron. <laughs> Just suggests an upgrade. Um, though originally, when they were first written, they were actually separate characters because Galvatron was a city commander under Megatron. And Have then they you played watched with... Love, Death and Robots? Yeah. Nope. There's Let's one see. of those you need to see. Okay. Um, so we've got a weird situation where, I think, is that, is that Bumble Jumper? Going by that Bumper, possibly. <laughs> Um, it's where bits of, yeah, people thought it was a toy made up of bits of Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee, and it wasn't, it was a completely different mold. So they called him Bumble Jumper. Uh, <laughs> and he accidentally got put on both Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee cards. Way back when, this is the first run of toys. Because okay. um, it was basically, it was three Penny Racer type cars in MicroChange. And they were supposed to be, the red Porsche was supposed to be Cliff Jumper. The yellow Volkswagen Beetle was supposed to be Bumblebee, but they had this other car which was a Mazda, I think, or something like that, and ended up ended up in yellow on both both characters' cars. Okay. Basically. Um, Bumble Jumper it is. So Bumble Jumper and Hot Shot. It might be Bumblebee, I'm not entirely sure from now on. Um, we've got Armada versions of characters running around with G1 versions of characters or Walter G1 versions of characters. There's Armada Megatron. Mm -hmm. um, we've just had Galvatron as G1-ish. Um, there's Armada Jetfire down the bottom there. So yeah, this heart was quite nice though. Mm. Look at that. Oh, bludgeon. Ooh. Okay, this is quite cool. I'm sure I've read this at some point, but I cannot remember it. Minicons. Uh, yeah, quite cool. Minicons were basically in Armada took the place of what Micromasters would have been in G1, and mm. Micromasters are now in Siege. Um, there we go. Um, that's a nice back behind the scenes stuff on Nemesis, which was a Decepticon warship, which was their version of the Ark, basically, their equivalent. Volume 28. There we go. Issue 48 is Volume 42, Revelation, which I believe is an IDW storyline. Probably middling, beginning to the middle of the, the, the that generation of IDW stuff before it got rebooted this year. Um, Why did it need rebooting? Because it had 10 years of stuff and people couldn't remember all the storylines. Um, and they wanted a bit Clean more... Clean slate. Clean slate, yeah. 
No, well, it's not what Marvel and DC don't do regularly, is it? I, I, I was not throwing stones, I was asking questions. Yeah, it's literally just to give them a clean slate. Listen to my other questions, a lot of those are stonish. Yeah. That was a genuine... That's <laughs> what? Um, so again, there we go. So when they reboot, do they actually go all the way back to explaining the thing, or do they just reboot from a certain point? I haven't seen this new reboot yet. I haven't seen it. Issue, only issue one's out. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't Fair know. Um, I mean, I think the front cover is Optimus Prime Motron. The Motron's a tank. Yeah. That's more sense anyway. I, I, I don't... It does make sense that Megatron would be a tank, but when you know that they're only doing it because people are being near about the toy. Um, yeah, but the gun never made sense. <laughs> Frankly. Gun on wheels? That makes more sense. True. Sides work. Uh, it's artwork's a bit stylized. Interesting. Ooh, very smart. That's quite nice. Different. Very nice. Jabs. See, I quite like the idea of the leader being a gun, but it only works in a democracy. What? The leader being a gun in a democracy. Well, just think about it. it your, your leader is the ultimate weapon, but he can only be wielded by the people. That makes sense. Just doesn't work for me. Not when the people is started. That's why I said it doesn't work. That's <laughs> wrong. Uh, and this is when they started to introduce the idea that R.C. is an assassin, which I really don't like. But there we go. Um, Jazz, apparently. What is it about Transformers and really not liking its female characters? I mean, there's still parts of me going, why are they female characters? They shouldn't have genders. But, of course, all of the original Transformers are kind of introduced as male because they're of male kids. So, mm, I can see where they're coming from. And there's a whole trying to have um, inclusion. But they're robots. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-two. I don't know. Apple and Android works. <laughs> okay. I can understand the Beast Wars. And they have organic parts. They have organics in Beast Wars. Yeah, that's why it's called Beast Wars. I just thought it was Beast Wars because they scanned organic creatures. Yeah, but they have, they have a fur coat. Literally, they have organics on the outside. So when Silver Bolt and Black Arachnia get it on. Um, what was Silver Bolt? A silver fish? No, Silver Bolt was a Fusor, so he was half eagle, half wolf. Got it on with a reptile? No, got it no, on with a black insect. Yeah, with an insect, an yes. insect. She was a large insect, to be fair. She was quite a big spider. Oh, oh my head. You need to watch Beast Wars. No! No, you got me to watch one. What was it, the Dorothy Fontana one? Ooh, I like your pussycat. Yes. Yes. That was the pilot. Yeah, that was season three when DC found that. Got that was that was the one you got. So many further written episodes as well. You forced me to watch it at a con. Just yes. You know. Anyway, it was a issue good con to be fair. Uh, he did get con. Issue forty nine is volume sixty five, which is Combined Awards, which immediately makes me think of Machina and uh, that that web show, and uh, makes me want to cry. Hi, I'm Windblow. Um, <laughs> I was a big fan of Team America. I get it. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. Um, right. Not sure about his artwork. <laughs> um, looks alright. Oh, Matt oh, oh, Damon. Matt Damon. Um, just think he was almost Coke. Um, that would have grown your... I know. You're joking. I'd have loved him as Coke. He'd, really? he'd have been a great Coke. Matt Damon as Coke. Okay. Because Ben Affleck as Spock. I'd have loved that even more. <laughs> that, that would have just made my day. No, I think Ben Affleck, ben Affleck should be in Trek somewhere. I really think they should put him... Actually, I'd like Tom to see him in Discovery. Trek somewhere. I think they both... Sh if we can get them both onto the Picard show, that would be good. I don't, I don't know how we do that. Actually, it's like, some of this art was actually really quite nice. It's the beginning wasn't so great. But I don't, like I don't know stuff. how much of a budget that would cost, but if we could get... Ban Affleck onto Discovery. Oh God, we should please, go please, please. Oh God, could you imagine we could have him as the next captain? Ah, oh, could be good. Batfleck as a as a Section Thirty One captain. No, I'm not Section. No, it wouldn't be Thirty One. It would not be Thirty One. 
What the bloody yeah. hell? Yeah. Is... No, 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 hang on. I'm not finished giggling at this. Oh, oh, children's songs. Oh, 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 oh this well. is the worst artwork. Oh my god. So we we'll we'll skip over that. that. It's combining all, so... Oh, that's atrocious! 65. <laughs> oh, that looks like, like anime fans with ballistic. Oh, that is... No, no. no just no. <laughs> just no. Volume 65. It's an issue you may wish to skip if you're purchasing individual issues. 62. 64. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. Who in Optimus Prime tries to annex Earth as part of the Cybertron alliance or something along these That lines. doesn't sound no, very... No, it doesn't sound very Optimus Prime, does it? At all. But there we go. But it's got jazz on the cover, so I don't care. Um, I don't even know who that is, Dan the Bomb. I don't know why I looked as if I'm going to... Like he's going to... <laughs> yeah. I have no idea why I did that. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> the art works a bit different. Uh, what's going on with RC there? Oh, she's probably going to murder someone in this version of the continuity. I don't um, like the faces in this one. Mm. Should we skip on my vehicle? Oh, that was Red Alert. Is that Red Alert? Is that supposed to be Red Alert? No, it's Sideswipe. Yeah, yeah, you know when normally the old work's alright, the old work in this is crap. Mm, yeah. Let's a bit more. Well, correction, I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, not a big fan either. To be fair, I've oh, got the dumb jazz. Um, I'm sorry, better though. Not very much. Yeah, I'm not, not a big fan of this, are we? Sorry. Not a fan. Right, okay. Uh, volume 79. So we move on to issue 51, which is volume 12 of Cosmic Carnival, which was just after Power Master Prime's come along, and he's on the way back to work with the children. The what? There's some children. Human children? Human children ended up with Skylinx in orbit. I, I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, uh, the children, basically, the children uh, are in the carnival as zoo exhibits. Basically. That's Skullgrim. He's one of the pretenders. What's a pretender? Robot in disguise. It's literally a robot with a coat. It's basically they go inside a shell which looks organic, but then they can operate a shell separately. Why? Why? For what? infiltration. For what purpose? We're nothing to them. Nothing at all. Why bother? Well, Skullgrin, uh, he got the really the, the, the best end of the job because he ended up being a movie star and doing monster movies. <laughs> in, the, in the American comic of yours. I asked the question again. Two, Why? Two Autobots actually ended up in their pretender shells on Femax, I think was the name of the planet, which basically was giant humans. So it kind of worked then, because they were in space, there was humans in spacesuits, and then one of the, th in Femax, they were all female, and they were getting very confused about these male guys, who, the male humans had turned up, but didn't understand what they were. They took off their battle armour, and then one of the Transformers ended up in a situation with, one of the, with a female leader and didn't know what to do. And then he opened up his um, his um, pretender shell to reveal the robot inside, and the female responded by lopping his head off with a sword. Well, I like that response. I like that response. But I ask this question again. Okay, I can kind of get on board with Optimus Prime going. You know what? Let's not wipe out the ants. They seem to have some sort of communication and they can build machines. Bear in so mind, let's, let's at this not... point had a headmaster. Yeah, but, uh, so, uh, as I said, Sorry, I, can, master. I can get on board with Prime We've coming to the planet. Well, instead of stuck with the original plan, but we won't go there. I can get on board with Prime coming to the planet and going, you know what, these little monkey things are cute, let's not kill them. Alright, I, I can kind of get on board with that. But Megatron giving a hooping fudge in... Anyway. All the Decepticon ones, Bar Star Scream had like evil monster things as their outer shells. Yeah, but again with the why 
bother infiltrating humanity? We're nothing. Uh, Hasbro running out of ideas for how to sell the toys. Right, okay, I'm with you. Monster Ninja suits. Sh double pretenders. Monster suits. Yeah. Okay. Right. So did the monster suit actually transform in, or was it literally a coat? Was it, it like was a full on sleeve? Basically, in Landmine's case, for instance, there was a robot that turned into a vehicle, which went inside the suit, and then could come out of the suit, and both the robot and the suit could be operated simultaneously. So you could surround someone with just yourself. Okay, so... Uh, did the toy come as a suit that went over the model, or was it clip-on bits that you put? It was basically it was um, it was a clamshell that you opened. Clamshell. Yeah. 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 No. Awesome. The toy on board. I mean, on board. Right. right. So um, the comic. There was actually double pretenders as well, where they could combine with their own shell, and the shell then transformed as well, like Thunderwing. So he had a, he could transform into a jet in his as the pretender, and then there was another jet inside, which then could combine with the front of it to make a bigger jet. Yeah. And you the matrix stretching, all the, well. stretching the toy line as me. Yeah. yeah, and then they introduced MicroMasters because Micro Machines are doing so well. <laughs> yeah. Did Micro Machines do well because of the concept or because of the price point of the smaller toy? Both. Okay. I would say. Because Micro Masters did really, really well. They were originally on cards that said Micro Transformers actually. They had the power to surprise. Anyway. The British comic, enemy action. There we are. Shockwave, Soundwave, and Galvatron. Firecons! Sorry, I heard noise. I was like, mm -hmm. Pyronicon! Um, and we've got some, oh, oh, some British stuff. There we go, that's, I think that's. Okay, we're back into me not liking the artwork. I see, I like this artwork. Then it's back in the day artwork, so. This is like late 80s artwork. Uh huh. At this point. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. But it's not 80s good artwork. Matter of opinion. Um, <laughs> so this is where they go and try and find, they find these human children in this zoo, try and rescue them and end up with Skylinks. Why didn't they rescue everything in the zoo? Why was it just the children they went for? Surely You've got to bear in mind, Prime is, Prime is very aware that the reason the humans are in danger and is because been, of that. Because he crashed the Ark on Earth. Okay. Right, oh, in the comics, um, where where, the, button where the slug people of Moldovia, mm. not so much. There's Skorgrin. Outside of his pretender shell, there you go. See, splitting comes out. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Uh, which is why, you know, the second live action movie, you had that pretender Decepticon. Mmm. Yeah, that was where they took, took the idea from. So yeah, she, that was bad. So she's technically a micromaster pretender because she's so small. It was still bad. Yeah, with that tongue. Ooh. What was that about? <laughs> Don't go there. It's a bad one. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, and then we have um, some of the cover galleries from back these. You can tell this is the American comic. And Did they British ever do ones. one of the Transformer, um, it wouldn't have been Beast Wars, Dinobots fighting Godzilla? Because that would have been funny as hell. Godzilla would be a lot. That well, a actually, crossover. they kind of did. Because Trypticon came to Earth at one point, which was um, a Decepticon city bot. And basically all five Dinobots took him on. Bearing in mind, he's significant. Yeah, no, that's not the same thing. I was just thinking that would have been good. Yeah, you because know, they've done various other Cold crossovers. I just thought something versus Godzilla would have been awesome. Well, look forward to what's coming then in the films. Really? Well, Legendary have the rights to Godzilla and King Kong. Oh, hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Let's have all the mythical creatures battling the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pacific Rim. No, not with specific rim. No. Specific rim? Is that a specific rim? It's a specific <laughs> rim. Right. Not with Pacific rim. rim. No, I can see it happening. It's going to be, because you've got Godzilla King of the Monsters coming, and then he's going to cross over with King Kong, and then it's going to be King Kong and Godzilla taking on the Jaegers. Because I still <laughs> got, I know, I know there have been a shed load of, 12, of really terrible 12. reboots. Yeah. But I really do have a soft spot for Godzilla. And I, I still think, I still think we could do it, we can reboot it, it can be good. And you already did. Don't no, did you not see the last Godzilla movie? It, it was, was also awesome. right. Fat neck. Well, a bit like you know an actual lizard. Um no, it's, it was alright. Well the sequel's coming and it's got all of the others in it. Oh Godzilla! Key. All the others that are good. Are uh, <laughs> Mothra, etc. Et et I'm not. Yeah, Mothra was not one of my favourites. Mothra was alright. Okay, come on then. 
Okay, issue 52 is volume 25, Prime Directive. That's a Dreamwave one. Um, I don't remember this very well. Oh wait, is this the the Arcus, the Decepticons crashed into Ar the Arctic? I think that's this one. Mirage on the cover. Um, yes, look, Soundwave stuck in the Arctic. There we go. 99 Arc 2 Tragedy. Um, so basically, this is one of I think this is when Dreamwave rebooted the the G1 universe, and yeah, you got Big Tits Prime. Yeah, very quick sideline. Mm -hmm. Forbidden Planet have Discovery stuff in stock, and like the travel towel and the passes. Okay. Um, yeah, just cool. what, why that went through my head, I thought they totally <clears throat> Um So yeah, this was, um, I think Simon Furman wrote this, I mm -hmm. think, I'm not entirely sure. Megatron being very megatron Um This is when we had all of the multiple cover issues and Dreamwave I have sold out of the first run and then did a reissue with a new cover and all this kind of stuff of each of the comics because I was selling out that quickly and it kind of took everybody by surprise. How come they never did a Nightwide versus Goliath style Megatron and... Huh? And why, why, why have they never done... Megatron as a truck. Megatron and like a head-to-head -head on but like a, a badass truck. Because that's against. Motormaster's job. Um, no, I was just thinking like the whole you know Knight Rider thing. It might be kind of good. Well, they, they kind of tried that with Motormaster. That was the whole point of Motormaster. Is he was supposed to be king of the road and would take on Optimus Prime, and every time he tried it, it got leveled because um, Prime was just yeah. Know. But it wasn't that part of the beauty of Goliath was that he could cream kit. And there's the cover gallery. Um, I think I've got most of those the original things and then I started realising how bad the artwork was and what they did to Optimus was weird and the, 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 the proportion of all off and it was just like no no I had enough now 25 did they do collector's go. cards for the Transformers other than the movies by collector's cards what exactly do you mean I mean very specifically trading cards uh, maybe with bio specs on the back of the characters and all the rest of it but specifically as trading cards not as something that come with a toy sold in the pack separately for you to collect and swap there's a collectible card game now oh there's a CCG yeah is it good? because I should Don't imagine that would be right here why? Because my character's back in It's it. another it thing I don't want to get into. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fair enough. Money. Money. Space. <laughs> yeah, they're going to come out with Hollow Force and special editions and mm. slip covers and yeah. all the rest of it. Yeah, no, no we're avoiding no, that. We're avoiding that. We're avoiding that. Okay. It's bad enough that I want to collect all the video games and the character and the, the toys that match the video game. Yeah, no, that's a dangerous connection to what. Yeah. So in the first, uh, issue 53 is volume 53, which is Liars A to D, which is IDW. Um, it's Nick Roche and Alex Milne and writing by James Roberts, so new characters introduced which you then get to like and then he'll kill them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Martin style of writing. Um, there we go. Um, so the artwork is quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be with those two guys doing the artwork. So yeah, all good. Yeah. More female characters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why didn't they do something sensible like just have the standard robots, but have female voice actors. I don't understand that. At GoBots, they did that. There was a, there was at least one character that was just a robot that happened to have lipstick and a female voice. It was the way it was portrayed. Really like, need for lipstick? Not really, but they did that. But it's not as bad as RC, is it? No, no, nothing's as bad as RC. Um, so yeah. The name annoys me for RC. Yeah. It really does. And Elite One. And Elite One? What's Elite One? Elite One. Oh no, I know what She was basically yeah, introduced yeah, as Optimus remember. Prime's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. So I, she only existed to now. be Optimus Prime's girlfriend and a part of the female resistance on Cybertron. I just thought, really? Yeah. Redesigned the format. Um, and you'd have thought this day and age we would have tried to incorporate a more yeah. balanced. Quite. That's why um, the new R.I.D. is quite interesting because strong arm is female. It's female. Is that um, typically a male character? No, she's basically. Um, it was a new character with a, a name that had been used before, but not hugely. Okay. Um, I mean, most people wouldn't remember Transformers Energon. Was it Cybertron? Strong arm. Can't remember. But basically, she's a big. Oh, you know what's really bad? I actually want to say it's Energon. 
I don't know why, but I really do. I, might, I think you got that, that right. Is that a game? No. Energon. That's a toy line. It's a toy line, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you got that right. Well done. Ah, oh, okay. That um, would be a first. That would stumble there somewhere. Strong Arm in the new R.I.D. is basically a police cadet. And she's a big bulky um, SUV or, or okay. water train vehicle, something like that, a police vehicle. Um, and somehow Bumblebee's her commanding officer. Seriously, what is her fascination with Bumblebee? I don't know. We really don't get it, but there we go. Um, I don't understand why it's such a liked character. He doesn't do that much. Mm. He didn't we do that much. I know that. Really well, originally cool he was introduced as sort of like the the person, the the, the, the Autobot who gets on vague, with the humans. Kind of vague comic relief, wasn't it? No, no, no. He was basically the bravest of the Autobots because he was the smallest and got himself into more trouble than anybody else. Um, but in the original comic, he was basically he got injured, damaged, whatever, and and Buster w Wiki found him, and it was him and his father yeah. who repaired him, which is yeah. Again, with the we find alien tech. Well, he literally, he, he literally in the comic said, "I don't know what I've done, but it seems to have got it right, and it seems to." See, be now that better. works. Now that's yeah. logic I mean, that's that I can get behind. Been, and, they, and it was it, it was written as well, so that Bumblebee was his code name. Okay. So yeah, which I think they've sort of brought back in the new Bumblebee movie because I think he's called B Eight or BB Eight Not at some point. It. Neither of I. Oh, I'd be funny with BB Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> anyway, issue 54 is volume 55. Shadow Play, that is IDW. Um, Overlord and Red Alert, Willow. Hello. Shadow Play, so is it a philosophical storyline? I don't know. Uh, there's Overlord, he was playing extra passenger prisoner and the mysterious fate of Red Alert. Oh, Fred, now you haven't killed Red Alert again! Bad enough in G2 when he got stripped to the frame by Decepticon Fire. And Generation 2 Decepticon Fire, and that wasn't even proper Decepticon. Um, <laughs> Surely the frame would be just as vulnerable to... No, but he's his endo frame. He was basically blasted, all of his armour blasted off, and, and basically he just went down smoking. We basically could see essentially his skeleton, okay. and everything else had gone. Okay. So his fuel pump, everything. It's just his head. As you do. Um, anyway, Shadow Play. Uh, writer James Roberts. Again, it's Alex Milne's artwork, so it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the artwork looks good. Really, really cool. So, Overlord is a character that we got in this country, in Japan, got on the American What students. the hell's that dodgy piece of crap? The ship is the logo. That is lame. Ooh. That is hella lame. Is that the, DJ, is that the Decepticon Justice? Nah, yes, yeah, so that might be worse. That's lame. Okay. That's crowbar squeezing plotline lame. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's quite cool. Well, that would make a lot more sense, but then the arc would have to be the Autobot symbol. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> um, it's interesting on there. There's a new version of Ultra Magnus who has a very small MicroMaster type pilot inside him. Again, with the concepts that makes so much sense. Yes. Um, oh, this Decepticon's been strung up. Just like the Autobots were in the original comic. Um, it's always quite nice. Some of these other characters who are background characters in the past. Is that a cup? Yeah, I think so. Um, cool. But there we go. Uh, yes, so it's a Decepticon Justice Department or whatever they call it. Um, 55! Basically, the new version of the Mayhem Squad, I think. 55, 55, 55, 55, 55. There we go. Here it goes. There we go. Issue 55 is volume 13, City of Fear. This is the zombies. Oh, is this the zombie story? This is the zombie stuff? story. Oh, right, okay, that's cool. And that's Triptychon, who I mentioned earlier, the City Boss. Yeah, the City Boss. Um, who I have the Titan version of, the Titan class version of, that we're going to have to review at some point. Okay. Um, so City of Fear, this is where an Autobot, a rogue Autobot scientist called Flame, who's using a radio signal, essentially Bluetooth or some other way, to wake up dead bodies and use them. I liked that. Yeah, so in Callis, I think, is it Callis? 
Um, yeah, Callis, the city state of Callis, the dead arising, basically. So you've got corroded bodies and they start coming to life. Okay. Which is quite cool. So you've got Ultra Magnus, the three Sparker bots and flywheels is a duo con. Okay, for, for any of you who've not read this story, they're very much going with Night of the Living Dead style zombie, yeah. not, you know, 28 days later style zombies. So they're sort of coming out and. Because uh... I always had an issue with that kind of zombie, that didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, well, this, brains, is back. Brains. this is where. Um, brains? Brains, yeah, brains. there's Impactor. Brains? So basically, spring is having to. But they'd be the easiest ones to destroy. You take them out of the joint, and they're gone. A flame basically is resurrected Megatron's old plan of creating engines that could turn Cybertron into a very large spacecraft. Basically, you wouldn't even need big engines. You just need. Yeah, you're treating it like a point thrust. You wouldn't even need to. With, with their lifespan, an ion engine would do it. Oh, no, 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 but he wanted to use it as a battle station. He was well, like a rammer. To, he was turning it into a battle station and, and ba or what, what they, they later referred to as a war world, because in the Generation 2 comic, they actually went back to this idea and started building war worlds. Again, so. with the something that sounds pointless. And why? Who are they fighting? Everything. Why? He wanted to conquer the galaxy. The oh, for what reason? To, because he's Megatron. As, as far as he's concerned, it's his right to rule the universe. I just don't quite... Yeah, okay. Alright. Yeah. He was, he was, he was designed um, yeah. to be evil. Yeah. yeah, but he wasn't designed to be evil. Isn't that the point? He made a the decision. The character was designed. Originally, he was the leader of the bad guys. That box makes him the bad guy. Anyway, someone's restarted the gladiatorial games back on Cybertron. Okay. So, yeah. Who are the Christians? <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. Who are the Christians? The Autobots. Okay. And um, obviously Decepticons are the Lions. Mm, well, kind of. They're just, they're evil just gladiators. throwing in whatever alien race as well so yeah you basically how many uh, alien races are there in the Transformer universe lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, and lots. why the hell haven't we all ganged together just to wipe these arseholes out because okay in the comics the Autobots were originally designed to basically police the entire universe that was the whole point of them by Primus and to take down Unicron so they were designed as a last line of defence mm. right, this is quite cool this is from the 1985 Transformers Annual, Plague of the Insecticons. It's completely out of sequence. Okay. And you can see the artwork is quite early on. Mm. So this would have been 1985 Annual would have actually been published at the beginning of December or okay. earlier than that. In yeah, it was just for the Christmas sales. Um, so, yeah, um, Prime's been drawn like the toy. Yeah. Um, and he has, and they very much emphasise on the... Um, abilities of the toy as well so you've got a section in here where he splits so he's got his trailer and roller operating separately from himself what the all old... all prime yeah oh okay so he's basically they a... don't do that very often no. do they? they have it all so yeah his rollers run off um, yeah. trailer separate prime the prime command module is running off on his own isn't there a thing that the further they are spread apart the it's stupider the they the are the... the longer it takes to control yeah basically it, it, it's basically um lag <laughs> yeah <laughs> essentially so you've got prime talking to uh warpath and him getting confused about why prime's voice is coming out roller um okay. and things like that but you've got this cool bit here where um shrapnel attacks roller Mm. It blows up and Prime doubles over in pain, which means that Bombshell misses him and Bombshell uh, creates Cerebro shells, which he implants in other characters to take the control of them. So he misses Prime and hits Ravage. The only problem is, is Ravage is actually controlling the Insecticons. So Bombshell's Ooh. controlling Ravage and Ravage is controlling Bombshell, so you end up with no mind, which is quite okay, cool. interesting. That's a nice bit yeah. of storytelling there. So that's quite cool. Okay, nice. So, yeah. Cool. I enjoyed that story quite a lot back. I mean, back in the day, I thought it was brilliant. But it's it, only one of the very few times that Prime has been used in that way properly. So volume thirteen. There you go. 
There we go. Right, issue 56 is the last one we've got to catch up with. Come on, you've got this good bookcase. Yeah. Issue 56 is volume 41, Drift. Drift is an interesting one. Drift is a fan-made character. By committee? No. Okay. No, it was actually, if I remember correctly, and I may be getting this wrong, but I believe he was created um, by someone who ended up being a pro comic person, but in a fanzine he created him. Okay. And he's basically a Decepticon who gets annoyed with the way the Decepticon's been run and, and basically goes after the Autobots. The Autobots. And he's very, if I believe, if I remember rightly, he's very honourable. Okay. And things like that, which makes sense why he didn't end up with staying with his other very long. Um, and he's, he's got a Japanese sort of design aesthetic. Okay. Very much. So in the Michael Bay movies, he's the one who gets Ken Watanabe's voice. I love the fact that you said names like they're going to register with <laughs> like, The guy who's in Godzilla. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he, that one. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, so, Drift. Um, there we go. There it is. I've got it. I mean, they did a toy of Drift earlier in Generations toy line. Mm. It might have been classics, actually. No, it was Generations. And it's, oh, I got the Japanese one because it's actually bright white and the British one was like an off-white. Mm. It's a brilliant toy. He's got um, daggers in the, in the car doors, which became sort of like flaps of his, his, his um, waist. Mm. So he's literally got daggers there and there, which he pulls out of his mm. doors. And he's got a sword that clips into the back. It's a lovely toy. I've really got to go back through some of the toys at some point. This is quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's awesome. His artwork's in here is quite nice as well. Mm, yeah, I'll give you that. I introduced is that lockdown? What's with the organic dragon? Yeah, they're probably on another planet, something like that. Okay. They do skip planets quite a bit. Because this is in RDW they had a craft called the Lost Light, where they basically were scooping uh, skipping around the universe in uh, enforcing the Tyrest Accords, I think it's called, because Ultra Magnus was like space police or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they've got faster than light travel or they've got a Stargate. Which is it? It's faster than light. Is it warp or is it? I think it's warp, essentially. Okay. There it is, there's drift. There we go. Ooh, that's quite nice. Mm. The artwork for this is nice. The artwork for most of the IDW stuff, though, is, in my opinion, very nice. Yes, it's Um That's all quite cool. There we go. That's mm. quite cool. Right, so that's volume 41. Let's get down again. Which thing. brings us up to date with this. Now, 41. you we can't see on camera the things that shifted in front. But would you like to, to bring those out and just yep. go through those for anybody who doesn't know what they are yet? Okay, so um, we're kind of doing, uh, as you've noticed, we've done a catch up here. So we're up to date with what I've, had, what I've received so far. Um, I take it there are no more free gifts to receive? No, no. So I've had all the free gifts. I've got my... Two um, metal bookends, which you can't yeah. see because they're holding this lot up. Yeah. I've got a Transformer logo this side. That's what the bookends look like. Auto. I will do photos. Um, there's a wallet as well. There's there. Um, there was a mug, which is here. Yes. Yeah. There was supposed to be a belt buckle, but I don't remember ever getting that. Oh, message, about a, message on the bad if you've not had it. Yeah. yeah. There is a steel plate. Well, I say yeah. steel plate, it's probably tin. Yeah. But, yeah. And which is uh, which cover? That's one of the American ones, so yeah. Do you have an issue number on it somewhere? And then. Oh, it's 50th issue. This is when he's doing the Underbase saga. So. And then this is a poster. That was a guide, yeah, it's a poster and a guide to the, the collection. Yeah. Now, the. Um, you the, need to contact them by the bubble. Yeah, though, I do. If you've not got it, then you should have had um, it. The key rings I've put somewhere safe, so clearly you can't find them. Can't find them. No. Um, but down there, so, but so far, I mean, it's a case of. It's £10 an issue, uh, some of the issues are clearly thicker than others, but that might be just the way they've 
the, 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 the print the job is better on some than others because yeah. the, the cut for the, the um, yeah. paper is off on a handful of these. Yeah, but overall, I'm quite, I'm quite yeah, glad enough. of them. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing is, is that the hardback versions of, of these have happened before, but they're not a tenner, they're more like 16, 17 or 20 pounds. Mm. So I think as a collection, this is actually not that bad value at all. The only downside to this collection would be if you only wanted the G1 stuff and not the IDW stuff. I know I've touched a specific thing which is it, just how yeah. it's done. So what it's about here that's G1-ish and then up there's the yeah, more some modern stuff. I think, I think IDW, uh, the Dreamwave stuff's about here yeah. and then IDW Because they, they broke it down so that in your shipments you don't know what you're getting yeah, quite. to stop people going, yeah. I'm going to... Yeah, only did it. which, yeah, from their point of view, I totally get it. From my point of view, <laughs> I'll give them the due on a number of formats. So, firstly, um, the print quality is very good. The cut Most quality, cases. cut quality on a handful is off. Mm. But generally speaking, the print's good. The stylization is good. The fact that they use the original comic covers in there and there are galleries in the back. The fact that they've gone for mainstream published material and then added additional bits into mm. the books to uh, pad it out and also to give fans more of a reference point. So from those points of view, yes. The, I'm not a massive fan of the covers. Mm. I think the artwork is lovely, but they appear to be a little easy to damage. Mm. I yeah. think the material could have been slightly denser. Yeah. But for the price point you're paying, yeah, I think they're good. I think the stylization is nice. I think the, the, the general print quality is good. Yeah. The way they've been put together is nice, although there's one or two things that I would have done slightly differently, which is mainly um, the solid borders that they put round between the... Because they've side... Well, technically, they've, they've sized them down from the original artwork for the comic. Ah, but the comic the for the British... Would have been um, a a four. So a, it'd be bigger than a be, four. Basically, be bigger than this. I mean, the, the, the British comics have been shrunk down. Yeah, they've been the shrunk American down. Comics have been well, actually, no. Really. See, this is the irony. They have and they haven't because the we all know the original artwork for oh, these yeah. are massive panels. Yeah, yeah. They're shrunk down for the comic books, yeah. and then the comic books for the British ones are shrunk down further for these, yeah. and then given a border where the American ones are blown. Up slightly, yeah. so they've been shrunk down and blown up. Yeah, that hasn't really fucked the artwork up. So I think they've gone back to the it's one or two masters. issues where they've had problems. But yeah. the borders around mm. annoyed me because with some of them it's a little jarring. They didn't blend. I would blend. If it was me, yeah. I'd have gone with a different style format. But that's purely. You know I read a lot of graphic literature. It's one of the bonuses of being dyslexic is I'm really picky about what I read. And, yeah, so my graphic literature is very different to yours. Yeah. But from a, a comic collection point of view, because there have been a number of different companies who have produced collections along these lines for various heroes or yeah. comics or universes and so on and so forth, for the price point, yeah, you can't knock these. If you're a Transformer fan, then yeah, it's, it's an easy Going back to the cover, I can understand where you're coming from. I, I'm not a big fan of this generic artwork they've used, no. which was created specifically for sort of like commercial um, licensing, essentially. Mm. So these are basically newly generated versions of the characters. And I don't like this version of the Transformers logo. What's annoying is when you look at the early materials to do with this collection is that the Transformers logo they used was the original G11. Mm. I've got a feeling originally these were going to have the proper G1 logo on them and then Hasbro changed the logo just as they were about to come out so we've got this this one which is the current it, one. It doesn't work. No, I, I, I much prefer the proper G1 yeah. um, sort of logo. Okay. Um, but there what we would go. you say the bad point for the collection is? Because we've already agreed the price point is decent. We, we, yeah. we, they've gone for an, uh, the mix of the complete range, so we can't knock it from that. Okay, so I've sung what I consider to be the, the plus and the negative points. I know what you're going to say the plus points are. What would you say the negative points are for this collection? Um, I mean, 
I can see a lot of people being annoyed that they can't collect just the ones they want. Because that's actually quite, quite hard. If it started an issue, you want to move through. No, I, I'm 100% like, with from, them from, on from there. A, from a business point of no. view. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people are just going to cherry pick the first. Yeah, but that, that would mean the whole collection um, didn't get printed. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, no, um, so I can see where that's come from. And, you know, as, as a collection, it's great. And it's a lovely set to have um, to choose from. Um, it's a bit of a shame that the British comics have been shrunk. Yeah, but no, that's just in your head because you're used to the the original, the original comics. comics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but one of the massive benefits is the fact that um, um, John Paul Bove has coloured the black and white strips. The yeah, you British did say that you've got the original colour. colours. Yeah. Um, so you know on that but basis. But don't you I feel can't... that? Okay, now this is from my own perspective. I dislike some of the colorations for. Um, I've got a handful of graphic novels that were originally done in black and white format, originally, and then they've been they've released a separate edition where it's been coloured later on. And you all, in my opinion, you always lose something between the original black and white and the colour because they were originally designed to be seen in black and white. Now this is the thing, is, is that the only reason they were black and white originally was because of cost. The printing costs. Yeah, so they okay. basically had a black and white section in the comic to reduce the cost. Okay. But would um, the artwork have been coloured, was it? No. No, no, it was never, it was never coloured, it was just inked. So, so the artist specifically had in mind for it to be seen that way? Yeah, this is this is the debatable thing. I'm not entirely sure of that. I think some of them thought they were going to end up being colour and then weren't, because mm. it stopped at one point being black and white, of being colour, and then went black and white. And some of those early ones, then it really did look like they were probably supposed it's to be colour mm -hmm. Um but I much prefer them colour. I don't know. Well, yeah. That's fair enough. I just wish they'd done things like um, in Regeneration One sorted the colouring out there that's slightly wrong so for instance why is Optimus Prime's eyes blue because in the comics they should be yellow <coughs> okay. like it's your toy yeah. and they were all the way along we'll in G1 we'll crowbar you into that right let's have it bugbear it's a bugbear that, it's that rounds it up because I need a drink Rounds it up for us. Yes. Um, Sven would really love to read your comments, so please <laughs> leave them in the section below. I, I might give them a glance. If you haven't, you should subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter. And if you look on Facebook in Geekology, the group, we always have fun photos of all the bits and pieces we review. So yeah, probably not so much out. these, but yeah, there is uh, stuff on you there. Might have if you like Transformers, there's, there's plenty of Masterpiece and other Transformers that are reviewed and photos of that, and they're actually all up in Geekology, the group now. Yeah, so there you go. You'll get to some of the covers and other bits. Yeah. And um, don't forget to check out our Patreon page. So uh, the links are all down below, so check it out. Ah, oh, thank you very much for watching, and good night. Bye. Hi and welcome to Geekology, I'm David. I'm Spare. And tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're catching up and he hasn't had any beer, so sorry, Linda. Yeah, this, um. is, this is going to be fun. Hello. Yeah. So uh, we are continuing the Transformer. Transformers. Transformers. The Definitive G1 collection. Yes, that's what we're doing. Why I should. Yeah. Okay, okay I'm going to have another crack at this intro. Okay. 
Last Rings, the Definitive Collection. Play. Hatchet. The Definitive G1 Collection. Play. You can take a hatchet job to it. Hi, and welcome to Comics Before There Was Google. That didn't work. I'm gonna try that one more time. Hi, and welcome to Comics Before There Were PDFs. Um. Just out of curiosity, for our American viewers, mm -hmm. what is the financial status for, for this much roughly? Um, well, there are ten or each. Okay. So. The whole collection will be 800 pounds of the latest issues. Yeah. So. 37, so 370 pounds worth of uh, one foot by two foot wall. There you go, Trump, that's how it's done. Unless, of course, <laughs> you happen to be cards against humanity and you've bought some of the land to stop him. <laughs> nice one, jabs. <laughs> you know what, you can't use that because I'm going to piss off some of our men. No, I was on about my joke. In my head, that was really funny, and then it went American viewers don't piss off American viewers. We need the Americans. It's going to go in the viewers anyway. Oh, because I need like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, listen, if you, do you want to risk pissing them off? Because I thought that in my head that was funny, and then afterwards I was like, no, we might have. We'll see how it plays when I watch it back. Okay, that's it. Like, yeah, that's an old launcher one, but it's female. Um, Autobot Junior Headmaster. Head on. Yeah. Um, he does like those Orientals giving him a little head. That's getting cut. Um, <laughs> just out of curiosity. Yeah. Because, you know, we do Star Trek, the official Star Trek collection by Eagle Moss. Star collection by Eagle <clears throat> Okay. Edit. <laughs> Three, two, one. I'm just another book in the wall. Book in the wall, book in the wall. Didn't work, it makes sense. Didn't need, no. Oh, okay. It's a good song. We don't need no education. Okay. <coughs> Educating Dave. We don't need no education. When I've got to explain the brick in the wall joke to the man educating me. Not so much. Quality fucking blooper. Really long explaining the joke blooper. Yeah. Hello, <gasps> man. Hi. So the snap is meant to be a quick funny thing, yeah? yeah. Okay. Sven has got his hat on. Hip 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 hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Sven has got his hat on and Dave wants to go away. Um, <laughs> Use that. Okay. Yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> just, just don't even edit it. We're not even gonna refilm it, just yeah, use that. <clears throat> Actually, you know what, I'll give you one for the bloopers. <clears throat> Three, two, one. I go to all the trouble of dressing pretty for you, and you're not even gonna be able to see it with this. Yep. Okay. So you ready to be midget. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi and welcome to my own personal hell. I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight we're David. educating David in a major way. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you an edit you can use now. So I. <laughs> Three, two. Hi and welcome to. Oh my good God! They did more of them. I'm David. <laughs> when I educate David, I do it like this. <laughs> <clears throat> Three, two, one. 